who instigated it? You know, just tell us, give us a brief about yourself. Just a brief you want people to know about yourself and tell us how did this project begin? I'll start with you, Winter Rose. Go ahead. Okay. Well, <laughs> my name's Elizabeth Horan. I yes. go by Ellie and on Twitter, I'm Winter Rose. So that's why Nathaniel likes to call me Winter. Awesome. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm here in Vermont. It's noon here. Um, I'm so grateful to be here with you, Sunis, that putting this together and Mbari Uno, thank you so much for giving us this chance to share our book. It, um, it's a book that didn't get a ton of attention, but I think it deserves attention because it's, it's so real. And um, the relationship that I have with Adadayo is so like pure and real kind of from the moment we met, we, um, just connected as friends and as like platonic loves and as his auntie and my child we just we connect in so many ways and one of them includes depression and kind of chronic issues with with mental illness and depression and um i i've been writing poetry for let's see five years now we wrote this book too uh okay. it might be three years ago now but we just, um, I kind of took him under my wing as my mentee, and we just were writing poems to each other. And I think, okay. I mean, maybe Addie, Addie has a different version of it, but we just kind of started writing back and forth and realized we had these voices that really mesh together and, you know, can bring two people together like him and I, but also can kind of work to bring like the world together because we're in different places, we're different people, ages, skin color, you know, we couldn't be more different except our hearts and minds are really very much in tune and, and similar. And I'm so blessed to have done this project with him. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very awesome. Okay, let, let's hear from Adi Dayo himself. Let's, let's, hear, let's hear his own version of, this, of, the, of the whole, uh, how the whole project began. Because it's very, it's very intriguing because we don't have uh, a lot of collaborations of this sort, yes? And so that's why I really want to know, you know, have the background of how it really came about. I, I met Elizabeth around uh, around time that I was processing, you know. I was um, mentally down. Initially, I was mentally down. I lost my grandma, my ex-girlfriend broke on me, you know, a lot of um lot a lot of mental struggle, a lot of absence. So I yeah. think I I was and then somebody, someone, it also just came into my inbox. I mean, she came to me and then we got to Okay. I mean, she's an amazing person. All right. For uh, her hands of love. And then, I, I, I mean, she's, she's, she's a lovable person. And I, I looked up to her poetry. Because I, I, I felt like, I mean, we do not exactly have poetry that bear out too much in, in one piece. Poetry that is entirely expressive. I, I beyond, <laughs> beyond, beyond, I, I enjoy our reading because it is super therapeutic. You need, of course, wood, beer, and everything. So, I mean, it's, it's a super therapeutic thing. Definitely. We got writing. We got writing. We, we just started to write, and then we, we, we read through what we have written. How it was, how the Progress was coming, and then I'm like, Oh Jesus, this is a book, this is a body of work. What I got okay. the attention of the chapter, or you did not. We did it. We, we wrote the book, and it killed us at that time. It is still killing us, knowing that we have dead out ourselves, shed love, and this ourselves. And yeah, that, that, that's how I feel. That's awesome. That's that's a very good start to this. That's a very good start to this. Okay, so I'm going to ask one more question. You guys get ready to read. Uh, I hope you have all the, the the whole formalities for the day. I think I shared it earlier on. So you guys get ready to read some of your favorite pieces from the collection. Uh, but let's let's ask let's ask one or two more questions before you guys get into reading properly. Um, so. This book can be said to be um, a collection containing poems of positive emotions. So let, let me ask you guys now, what are the dynamics of expressing such emotions with the intersubjectivity of art, of the art making process, you know, making the art making process is intersubjective, right? So what are the dynamics of making such a work 
you know, which positive poems, you know, positive poems of positive emotions. What are the dynamics there? Go ahead, Adida, go ahead. I, I feel like there's, 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 there's not always dynamics as regards uh, poetry, as regards writing poetry, or, or in the concept of art in general. I feel like yeah. what is more important is the fact that you are writing. I mean, you are writing your poetry. Okay. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. So it is very important that you, you bear it all out when, when you write. And that, that is exactly what, what is significantly um, significantly decides what kind of poetry you're writing. It, it, it sort of like creates for you an image. It said that it is very important that writers generally you know, strive to, to write their truth. And okay. by truth, I, I, I do not mean that, um, I, I do not mean that stories that we can access, I, I mean that stories that you, you can entirely, entirely create and stand by. So I said that when Elizabeth and I started writing, so writers would go flying. I mean, at some point, I, I, I kept wondering that, okay, so this woman actually went through all this thing. Yeah. And that is the purpose of art for me. I feel like there's, 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 there's a place of art that lets you to know, that lets you to feel. Elizabeth's poetry guided when she said I walk, I read this, it, it guides my emotions, guides how I feel about the next poem that I am going to write. Okay. So okay. basically, yes, that is that is it for me. That's beautiful. All right, let, let's hear from Elizabeth. Let, let's hear her, her perspective on, on the question. What are, what are the dynamics of writing this um, positive poems of positive emotions? Yeah. Well, I think first off, I think it's important to say like writing a collaboration like this. Um, which which deals with a lot of difficult subject matter for sure um, takes a lot of trust and like Patty and I, I I don't know from kind of the beginning we started working together like if I would send him a difficult poem he kind mm -hmm. of be right there holding me and and trust me back to to also share something painful like one of the first ones he showed me was the anorexia nervosa one and okay. I was like, I was like, damn, we need, you know, like, I know that was one of the first poems. And then it prompted me to share in the ward, which is also, you know, so these poems are, really are our truths. But then I think because of kind of that trust and that beautiful care, we were able to yeah. write poems that like are very beautiful in their pain. So it's not like this is an easy book to read, you know. But I think you can write about pain in a really beautiful way. And right. that was one of the first things I've no I noticed about Addie's writing when I saw him on Twitter and I, I think he had a poem at Burning House maybe that I read. And I and I and that's why that poem of mine says like I noticed that the rooms in your poems smelled like the rooms in mine. Like there was this deep I remember writing him and being like, Your poems are so thick. They're so like uh, you know, and um I think we're we both Kind of, we write really differently, but both of us show like our soul and our hearts and our inside to the reader and to each other. And it makes, you know, writing about these subject matters of mental illness and pain and loss and grief and abuse, like accessible, I guess, to okay. the reader and to, you know. Yeah. All right, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think we've done a lot of we've done a lot of questions and answers. That it's time to to read a couple of poems, at least two each. I don't know if we have those poems ready. Uh, mm -hmm. Daya, we're gonna let we're gonna let Elizabeth go first. See if that's fine by you. Yes. Yeah, sure, it is. All right, that's okay. awesome. Elizabeth, you're gonna give us two poems. Let's let's hear you. You can share you can share the content. I'm hoping you can be able, you can share the content in, in case you you are able to do that. That'll be fine. But if not, we're yeah. going to listen to the melody in your voice, and then I'm sure we're going to we're going to flow along. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'll do two. Um. Oh, it's so hard to choose what to do. I'll just start with the first poem, just because it kind of gives like a intro to the book and what we're talking about. So this one's All called right. Troubled That's... Water. Okay. Troubled Water, and I dedicated it to Addie when I wrote it. Troubled Water. Like a bridge below me out into the world, 
strident arch for once, your back over mine, deep into the soul self. And the river rages under skin, hide in the vivid moon, veins like sticks caught, snagged on Milk River. And they wonder why fish give in to a hook and lure. Lines, sinkers, my lips swollen, sags. So many punctures, so many times reeled in and in, in. Dreams of black and crimson strokes. I am not dead, but I am not swimming. Awesome. Thank you very much. Wonderful. One more. Amazing. Thank I you. see. Praise us. I always say it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. Okay. Um, this one, this one deals with kind of inpatient mental health, which is, you know, something I've experienced of being hospitalized. And I was recently hospitalized this summer for severe depression and PTSD. And um, it seems fitting to read it. And um, my thanks and heart go out to all the people who held me up during that really painful eight days in the psych ward. Mm. And um, I just... I just hug everybody who struggles and who has held me up so graciously. This one's for y'all. It's called Ropes right, Have No strong, Idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ropes have no idea their impact. I went away, cycled and spiraled and all that shit. And I went to the place where you know about the dirt floor. And I saw you bent over, scratching at your eyes once before. And I laid there, a virgin to the ward's power. And there was a boy dangling in the corner. And there was you and me, holding out one ET finger, touching each other, as if it would shock the little white pills right out of our mouths. And I wanted to kiss you. Some might think that is weird, deranged, inappropriate, and who cares? No one is watching me smoke all these cigarettes. Dreaming of the time you let me give you a foot rub with my cocoa butter lotion. I was the dying lamb. And so, yeah, I went away again, and I'm trying to get back to you. I know you're still in the membranes, waiting and watching in the brain cogs, and the meds don't regurgitate. The brownie does not react to the laxident, laxative. The demons giggle, so excruciating in my spine. They want to suck me marrow and saliva. And the boy is still dangling in the corner. I cut him down over and over. I swaddle and kiss over and over. I give him a foot rub with my cocoa butter. And I make him mine each day. Because I never seem to get any better. Wow. Wow. I am, I, I didn't, I don't know what to say. It's, uh, it, like I said, <laughs> So I, I, I want, let, let me read what some people are saying, you know. So Timothy just says, the intensity of it, you know, uh, that has all the feels. Christian, that's Christian quotes. He says, that has all the feels. Uh, Steve says, so deep. You know, Prince says, that was beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful, but it's, it's beautiful pain, you know. It's, it's pain. It's, it's beautiful. Yes, I get, but it's, you know, you can feel it. You know, you can feel it. It's really, really wonderful. It's amazing. Uh, I'm really happy, you, you know, that you have you have tried, you have fought it. I'm really, I'm really, really glad, you know, that we're having this discussion right now. Dayo, are you ready? Dayo, yes, are you ready? I am. I am. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of people are saying, "Hey, uh, <laughs> Winter Rose is um, yeah, her reading is is intense," you know, so. I'm hoping you're I mean, going to imagine that. You, you can, no, 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 no. You, you can imagine <laughs> how I felt when we were writing this book. This book. You can imagine... I, 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 I am I feeling it right now. I am feeling first right and I, I sincerely want to cry and I can't because I'm in front of the world. Um, it's all right. It's butterfly. all right. <laughs> yes. butterfly. I wrote this for Elizabeth. All right. I see you in a field of echoes, the petals opening into colored wings, and angels inside your dream. The little girl in your womb says, Mommy, I'm coming home. 
and for the first time you spread your lips like waiting arms into a smile. And for the first time your boys rush into your heart with flowers. And the birds lift their wings into clouds where God makes your body butterfly, a colored city at dusk. We shall hear no we shall hear no silence no more. Thank you. Uh, okay, Just trying to. That one's so beautiful. Okay, so, uh, this other one is I love the way you say my name, Elizabeth. Finally, <laughs> finally, when you find love in a jellyfish, remember the kindness of water. That is, your mother, the way she took you into her arms the day you were born in blue flames with your, while your father read the newspaper. Maybe you were created to be a thing to be loved by girls, girls, girls. Maybe when she tasted your lips, she was frightened that your mouth is full of goings and comings. Finally, when you find love in the jellyfish, remember, the kindness of water. Remember the day you logged on to Twitter and Elizabeth sent you flowers. Remember how you, how you, how you formed the shape of her mouth as she tenderly says, I love you. I know you, broken one. Remember how you smiled into the dark. Thank you. I love that one. <laughs> I gave you flowers on Twitter. <laughs> I can't, we can't hear you, so yes, we can't hear you. Okay, I said, Prince is snapping his fingers, and then I, I was going to read Timothy. Timothy says, oh, come on, your mouth is full of goings and comings. Honestly, <laughs> I, 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 I want to tell you what I did when I read this poem. I picked out the, I picked out the line, um, The Kindness of Water. It's on my, it's on my status. If you, it's on my status on WhatsApp. The kindness of water. I, let me let me just let me let me let me dive Let me let me go away from what we have, anything we have, and ask: How does one even come up with such metaphors? How, how does one come up with such, uh, you know, such imagery? Such, I mean, such a tense. How 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 does it come? Where does it come from? Well, I, at that time, I think why I can sincerely relate with this. Was that as that at that time when I was writing this poem, I I was reading a story where um, there was a news actually about people who tried to um, travel out of the country, out out of out of um, out of Africa through the Mediterranean Sea, and then died. Okay. And then I remember, and then I was I was trying to relate it to the fact that there were some people who were taken against their will. And they sailed safely, mm. and they got they got to America through the sea. Yeah, so, I mean, water has been kind to people who were taken against their will, and um, water wasn't kind to people who tried to live on their own volition. willingly. On their, yeah, yeah. Yes, willingly. And yeah. then I, I I was relating it to the fact that mental health is not something you asked for. I mean, it's not something that you sincerely ask for. So basically, wow. all right, all right. That that's uh, it's awesome. I, I honestly, you know, you, I I had the chills when I was reading that poem. You know, I really immersed myself into it. Okay, um, guys who are watching us, uh, let us know if you have any questions. We're going to ask them. Uh, so we're going back to question section. So you guys get ready. You have two more poems coming up very shortly. But let me ask you some of the things that uh, you know I have scribbled down uh, going through the the collection. I was going to ask. So, I, is it troubling that at this moment in history, where mental health is a big issue, is is it troubling that many poets are copying patterns, images, designs, themes, and even stories? Is is it troubling? Dio, you can go ahead. My friends and I keep talking about this. We keep talking about this. And if I, I see you, <laughs> so we've <laughs> like gone back and forth 
about this because it's very important to to pivot these discussions. You know exactly. It's it's it, um it is we are at a time where poetry is gaining super 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 Mention. attention. Exactly. We are at a time where where new writers are springing up. New writers are, are, are writing. We are at a time where people are really interested in what people have to say through their poetry. And then we, I, I feel like we are the generation that look really inward. I mean, um, days of Okigo and um, JP Clark, they would write about, they would write about politics, but of course they would use um, cities, the image of cities, Ibadan, yeah. Idoto, you know, but yeah, we are we are the generation that politicize self. We we write about self. Now, why I'm talking about this is because it always starts with self. You know, who you like to read, how they influence you. We cannot exactly take away the power of the influence in poetry. People True. would always write like people. People will always write like people, but at some point, I mean persistence. I'm trying to like shorten the whole context of my explanation. But at some point, I get you. Consistence would would is what would take you away from the shadows in which you walk. It is consistency that would um, that would carve out your voice. I mean, we've we've talked about this. The the, the foul play here is that you are copying people. I mean, you are copying, you are plagiarizing people. That's the foul play. <laughs> If you are not plagiarizing, I mean, influence is a thing. Actually, it's. I am sure that I am sure that. Um, I I think um, what's it called? Uh, Kwame Dos was saying last time because I had the reading last night. Kwame Dos was saying last night that it is very amazing that people who submit for um APBF chat book that they should receive from read people from the past and then they, they take they borrow lines they borrow lines from books that they published in 2013 2014 and you know you know that you know that obviously <laughs> this writer is new this writer yeah. is new. this writer is just writing we are just hearing their name for the first time but you can imagine that they date back to 2013 to be to be influenced by Safia Elio and Ladan Osman. So influence yeah. is really a thing. It is not something that we can totally break away from. But it is just that the, the discussion we should be having is why people play guys, why people should not play guys, what would happen to people that will start castigating people that play guys is so I mean <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. I, Thank I, I, you. I, I like I like where you are thinking that too. I like how you are thinking that too. Elizabeth, we're coming over to you now. Uh, let, let me ask you this. How can the making of poetry be used as a means to approach mental health issues? I, I, I want to have your perspective on that. Uh, how can the making of poetry be used as a means to approach mental health issues? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think for myself anyway, um, I once wrote an, an essay um, about the power of poetry and how like in my real life, in my reality, in my little town, like I am often seen as odd or different. Um, you know, I've lost friends because of my struggles with mental illness. Um, I've been misunderstood. Uh, it can be a very isolating and lonely place to be when you have mental illness and you don't really know you can't like share that with another mom, you know, that you'd scare them. Um, you know, the things that I think about in my brain are not always very pretty and they're not something that you talk about at a barbecue, you know? So like for me, poetry, when I write about the painful things I write about, which is trauma in my life and addiction and abuse and pain, um, it, it's, it's not received that way. It's received as like, wow, I'm so happy you said that because I too was abused and I'm having trouble coping with my trauma too. And I feel less alone when you talk about postpartum depression. Um, yeah. So I guess for me, like I always have wanted my poems to do a job and not just be poems, but to reach out to other people and say, you know, you're not alone. I'm here. If I survived this, you can survive it. You know, especially for women. I write a lot about women and for women. Um, 
obviously not exclusively, but I mean, as a woman, I feel able to do that and really speak to pain that, that women carry yeah. Um, yeah. and loneliness. And so I guess okay. for me, I think poetry, unlike, you know, it's an art where you can say whatever you want, need to, whatever you want to. And I'm not brave enough to tell these stories in, real, in my real life. But when I'm writing mm. poetry, I you feel that's I you can I don't really express. Hold back. Yeah, I don't hold mm. back because otherwise it's not real. It's not me. It okay. it would be me sugarcoating things, and I don't do that when I write poems. So I think I guess my poetry. But, I think it serves to help people feel m more understood and less alone. And I think if it does right. that, then it's a good job. All right, mm -hmm. that's great. Still on you. Let, let me ask you then. Uh, I'm going to ask you two questions. How much of a healing impact did this collection have on you? That's one. And then uh, because of what you just said previously, because you are able to freely, you know, express yourself and all that, I was going to ask you, what is the limit to vulnerability when it comes to, you know, writing this, you know, what, what is the limit which one can be vulnerable? One, the healing and then the second question will be uh, the limit of vulnerability. Daya, you're going to answer this question also. So let's start with uh, Elizabeth. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think it's as far as how healing it is. Um, honestly, it's not always that healing. Like when you write a poem, like um, out here in the void about having an eating disorder and being in the hospital, like that can bring back trauma and pain and and sometimes make it sit with you again but i still think it's necessary to do it in the hopes that sharing it with somebody will take some of that weight away from you okay. um so sharing okay. these writing with adadio certainly made me feel cared for and loved and respected and all those good feelings that we all deserve to feel and not so much okay. shame and pain. So I think they're healing and that you're sharing, but I think writing about trauma doesn't, doesn't like fix anything. It doesn't necessarily make anything go away, but you, I think, wow. I think it has the that's, power to help that's you feel a, less. That's a hard nugget there. That's oh, a very hard yeah. nugget there. They're very, very hard one. Very hard one right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. So let, let's speak about the, the level of vulnerability. Yeah. So that's, um, that's an intense question too. So um, I've written just about like everything that's ever happened to me, including about addiction and that book, Alcoholic Betty, um, that pushed the limits of what I can and maybe should do as far as sharing my vulnerability because it, like writing it and having it come out and be published was terrifying. Mm. um as was because i thought people would be like oh my god you know she's such a mess i can't believe she she drank like that um you know get a grip um and then the, my was it rape book which deals with sexual assault and people not women everyone not being believed and that mm. was also terrifying because i felt like well if the person who abused me reads this i i felt really um, unsafe, even though it wasn't yeah. realistic that he would come hurt me or anyone would hurt me. It f I felt the pain of women worrying, am I going to get hurt again? Am I going to be raped again? Am I going to be assaulted? And um, so those two are kind of the, the two that uh -huh. pushed me very much to the edge. And I, I, I hung on. <laughs> I'm still, you know, I hung on. But um there is an edge. There is an edge, and I'm not sure I could push any harder than I have in what wow. I've done. <laughs> wow, you uh, trust me. This is. Uh, let me read. Let me read. What, what you, you don't know how strong what you have just said in the last uh, two minutes is. Let me read what some people have said about it, so you so you understand. Uh, Father Kemi says, "Very courageous to share pain." It recognizes our common humanity. That's that's Fadi Kemi. That's what she says. And Faith Emmanuel says, "Well done. Thanks for being honest and vulnerable." I don't I don't think it's an easy thing. And then Kristen says, "It is an incredible collection." I I, I get where it's coming from. So it, 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 because I had to ask that question, it's not easy to to lay it all on the 
page. Because trust me, regardless of how you want to distance yourself from the persona, everybody's looking at you. Because like Dio actually said, we are a generation now that is looking from the eye perspective. It is from me to the world. It's no more writing about something else. It's about my own story, my own truth. Dio, are you there? Um, Dio, can you hear me? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Can I? All right. I, I want you to come into this discussion. Yes, go ahead. So, yes, I mean, I, I am still very not brave to talk about things that I have gone through, although I am trying. Because it takes so okay. much courage. It takes so much forgiveness. It takes, because, I mean, we've gone through a lot of things that you feel like, I did not bring this upon myself, but I can't forgive myself that it happened to me. We've gone through a whole lot of things. And, and it, it takes so much courage to, to bear all okay. out. I mean, I, I, I sincerely, I sincerely, sincerely, you know, just look at Elizabeth and I'm like, this lady has written about everything that has happened to her, to her in her life. Ha! Ulua. Yes. Because, <laughs> I mean... That's but, it. That's not. That's not, that, that it's is, not easy. But 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 that is that is a thing with poetry. Mm. You, well, you know, exactly Adonayo, I'm I'm more than twenty years older than you, dear. So you have lots of time to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> when you're forty-five, <laughs> you might be writing about your pain from your twenties. Well, I guess. I, I guess I mean I feel like I've, I've written so much about so much pain. My, my, I've written about so much pain and so much pain and so much pain that I feel like I might not get to write about these things again. But every single day I keep reinventing new ways to talk about these things because mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, mm -hmm. they are the center of my life. Because when I wake and I see. A particular scar on my body, I am reminded that oh, I survived this, I survived this. So it is it is very important that we write about these things. Not to not to um I, I, it is it's not exactly to to throw it all away, but it's a testimony. When you write these things, yeah. and people get to see them, they know that and they, they, they are probably going through it. They know that, oh, okay. So basically, I wrote a particular poem. Um, it's on mineral leads. Uh, I titled it Amen. And, you know, okay. a lot of people writing me that they could relate with the particular poem because it was talking about father's absence. And then that particular day that I got published, I, I, I know how many, like how many of my friends that had father issues. And, you know, it's it that and that is the thing with poetry. It's 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 more like a Ponzi scheme. Somebody starts up, somebody writes a, a poem, and then um, the poem becomes a mirror, and everybody starts to see themselves in their own themselves. Image. Exactly. That is exactly. Yes, yeah, that that is that is what it does. You know, you write, you you just write, whether it is fictional or whether it's your personal truth, whether it's your creative truth. You write, and then people just come, and then they see it, and then I'm like. So, poetry would always make you very vulnerable. Whether you're telling the truth or whether you are being creative about the truth, you would always be, be vulnerable yeah. because you wrote it. And then, I mean, I've, I've seen people who wrote, I've, I've read people that who wrote about a particular thing to the extent mm -hmm. that they started to feel that thing. Some people who yeah. are not exactly depressed, but they are writing about their depressed friends, what their depressed friends went through. And then they realize that, oh God, is like, I'm beginning to become depressed too. And that is the concept of shared pain. Poetry would drag you into the subject matter. It does that all the exactly. freaking time. If you do exactly. not, if you do not, if you have your daddy with you all the freaking time, and then you start writing about daddy issues, you feel like he has been away all his, all your life. So, I mean, all your life, we yeah. have to be, Yes, we have to be careful about how we pivot our writing one. But I mean, what is the essence of writing if you are not going all in? What is the essence of, of being creative if, if 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 you if you are not brave with it? So yeah, that's that's my stand. That's awesome. All right, we're we're gonna read some poems, but before that, let me read uh, what Father Kemi says here again. She says, 
excited to read this collection, Adidaya and Elizabeth. It's beautiful that we, I really, I really wish that some of these works can actually get, you know, the attention that they deserve. And that's the fear and the, the problem with poetry sometimes, you know, uh, unlike fiction, sometimes these poems don't even just, they don't get to all the places they need to get to. You know, and eventually, but the beauty about poetry is that eventually when somebody gets them in their grips and then you read through the collection, you, be, you, you just love it. You, you own it. You want to, you know, you want to have it totally, which is what makes this um, uh, so righteous to go flying very beautiful. All right, Elizabeth, we're going to start this time around with um, Dayo. He's going to read two poems and then we'll come back to you. Dayo, are you ready? Yes, I am. Um, I'm trying to add to not read this very long poem that is tempting me um anorexia nervosa i'm trying okay. so hard to not read it because it's actually very long and i do not yeah, want your network to... your network is your network is giving us your network is giving us a problem again it's nigeria it's okay not me. you're good now you're good now. <laughs> okay so i'm trying so it's all right i'm trying so hard to not read to not read this poem that that i but i would eventually let me just read this poem as it's a long poem, but I'll read it, and then I'll not read on that one. I, I hope that's fine. So the title of the poem is Anorexia. Uh, yeah. So um, if you can, Navosa. Maybe maybe you have to put off your maybe you have to put off your video so we can hear your audio louder and better, so that the bandwidth like the person like awesome. said earlier on, so that the bandwidth is better. Awesome. All right. Now okay. let's go. Anorexia. Can you hear me? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so Anorisha Navosa. An eating disorder characterized by a distorted body shape, body image, fear of being obese, persistent aversion to food, and severe weight loss and malnutrition. It is most common, it, it most commonly affects teenage Damn, girls and young you. women who often <sighs> Dio, you want to start again? I, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, start again. Please start again. We couldn't hear. Okay. Anorexia nervosa. Right. The first time I told my parents about depression, my father recalled like a gun, my mother, tender as the palms of evening sun, folded into a smile and asked if I was all right. When a body is set on fire, do you save the man inside the moon or the light thrown upon the face of a sea? And indeed, no one knows what creaks the floor except what creaks it. Two, pear-shaped girl with curly hair, broken in all beautiful ways, turbulent. I held the seashell to my ear at the beach when I was four. The rancorous silence still born in my ear. It still reminds me of my little brother swallowed by the beach that evening. His body dancing lifeless to music of waves. My mother's heavy body crashing into the silt. And a father's long walk, his shadow, the body image of a god sliced into a plate of grief, formed a portion of the night. Three, a fallout bed. Little brown kites broken by wind. A country too heavy for its people. A music too loud for ear. Grief beating into a lake. History as a way of retelling itself. My grandmother died by hanging. Her body clenched into a fist and knocked itself out. Children laugh better when they mock. Four. I fear my mind is a horizon that sets itself ablaze. I am afraid of losing because the sea to me I am afraid of losing you because you are the sea to me. Afraid. I read my brother's letter aloud to start a church of people crying in our house. My eyes no longer measure the height of your shadows. Five. For God so loved me, A, he gave me a brother that crashed into a sea. B, he died for me, but I still bleed his sins. C, sedative drugs no longer command my body to sleep. D, one day, the body will take flight. E, he prepared a place for me in my mind, a burning paradise. F, he gave me an alternate reality of stones. A little boy drowns in his dream, in my dream, but does not carry the face of my brother. G, 
my brother will come back to us. H, he kept my tiny soul in a big body. Wow. I, he planted a petal of thorns in a broken vase. J, wow. all of the above. Six, broken girl, pick up your pieces you feel. You big broken map. You puzzle of a body. Pick the fuck up and don't make this room a mess. You stink, you scream. I throw a dart of words at myself. Mistake my, mistakes made by genetics by self can't be undone in prayer. Wow. May the ground open in a room full of people and swallow me. You lick, smelly fat ass. Leave a note for your brother and hang the fuck away. What is war when you can't fight it? Thank you. Oh, bro. <laughs> Man. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, Timothy was saying something earlier on. This is when you wish we could watch you, like, perform that poem and just, you know, read it. Sadly, like you said, this is Niger. Let me read. Let me just read some of the comments. I can see some. A lot of comments were coming in as we were reading, like, let me, let me start from here. Uh, Timothy just says, man. Then Kola says anorexia. And then Timothy goes again, dang. And then Kola goes again and says, history has the way of telling itself. I think those are the things that make this world very sick. It's the lines in them. It is what they portray. My prayer says, children laugh better when they mock. Wow. That's it's something. Henry just puts all there and says, hey, it's on fire. You know, then Kola goes again to say, my eyes no longer mention the height of your shadow. It, it, it's almost like I, I want to ask where, where how do you how do you naturally get this words out? Because they are very haunting, you know. They, it, it, it's something that leaves, you know, whoever is there. The person is just going over it over and over again. I think that was a beautiful read. I think that was a very beautiful read. Uh, Winter Rose, are you ready? Everybody's, everybody's just talking about it. Like, people cannot get enough of what you do. Timothy says, seek peace. Say, there is much profundity. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and then know, he says, don't like, make me cry, Elite. That's a hard it, act it, to follow, so Addy. Jesus. <laughs> you, you, you know, when, when, you said, when you said to me that I was, when you said to me I was working, I was working so hard on, on, the, on the whole program and the whole program. I'm like, it is what the impact of the book has on me. Uh, if you really love poetry and you understand the, the power within it, you, you can't just let it go. You, you want to immerse yourself into it. It's so beautiful. All right, we're going to hear something beautiful again from Elizabeth. All right, over to you. Okay. Um, I wanted to say, just before I start, going back to what we were talking about, like, about writing about your pain, I think okay. I wanted to add, like, you know, the point of doing it. Yes. It's also to say that I survived. It's not yes. like I had an addiction and I died. I'm here fighting and writing about it. I'm still hurting, but like, I'm not giving the fuck up, you know? And I think that is the power that these, that poetry like this gives is that story of survival. And, you know, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to add that because I think it's important exactly. to say. Exactly. Okay. So um, should I read one or two, Nathaniel? What do you think? One. You can read two. Dial read one because it was easy. It was long. It's longer. Okay. So uh, like I said, that Anorexia Nervosa poem was one of the first ones I ever read of his, and I was so floored by it. And I wrote this one in response. So it also deals with eating disorders. It's called Out Here in the Void. Okay. I am out here in the void. Not my bones, of course. Not any meat left to speak of. Not the horrid, messy muscle. Not the toothpick ossifications which held me together. A scarecrow, which scares not one single crow. I am out here sending signals to you. Thank you for holding me up those nights. Thank you for laughing into my hands, for holding my head when I hurt so bad. I was the food one, the lack of food one, but no one else ever touched me again. Never held me drowning, never spat in my eye, never tore my clothes, never told me I should fuck them or die. I am out here floating so light like petals and I don't fall into any wind. 
I am so light, so slight like a small child, and nobody tells me that 70 pounds is too thin. Nobody tells mm. me what to eat or anything else for that matter. Like, we need to change your feeding tube, or we need to give you your meds now, or it's time for your weigh-in, or it's time for group art therapy, or your family isn't coming to see you today. Please don't feel bad that I did not make it because I am much, so much happier without my archaic body of bone, muscle, and heavy hair, which floated like arsenic death pools, so much of it around my face like spaghetti. Couldn't bear to be anything else but a tree limb, just limbs up, leaves open, seeing nothing, no red, just out here floating, placidly dead, out here floating, but happy and thin. Wow. wow. I, I was good. So one, the question came into my head. When Elizabeth! Really, <laughs> oh. I, 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 I want to ask you a question, Elizabeth. Do you fear that when you read and when you write, do you fear that you leave your body on the reader? Do I feel like I, I do what? Do you fear? Do you fear that you leave your burden on the reader? Like oh, you, leave, you, leave my you, burden? Yes. Do you fear that just... I thought, you said, you, I thought you said, do you le feel like you leave your body on the reader? And I was like, well, no. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a, a really valid question because they're painful and you're kind of like, here's my pain and now I need you to hold it with me and... Yeah, you didn't know yeah. how you didn't know those words of pain before I just read that. Yeah. But I guess I think um, you know, and I always want to kind of protect my readers and be like, "Oh, this is a difficult one. I hope you're going to be okay." But I think all of us being poets, like we're here because we can hold that pain. You know, exactly. We exactly. wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't pick up a book like this if we weren't able to say, "Addie, I'll hold your pain in my hand." Okay. Sure thing. You know, okay. so I think in, you know. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. You have one more piece to go, go ahead. Okay, so this one I wrote um, for Addy about okay. his pain. This is kind of an example of how we did that for each other. It's called My Best right. Work is Often Maintenance. I stand and stare at your naked back for the wrong reasons. It is an escape I long to splash face first into knots, barriers, chinks in the armor, ribs encircle the organs. I wonder if I imagine it harder. I could plunge in my hand and feel the lust for peace and quiet, passion for heat upon my limp and dull fingers. If I pressed my chest into your chest, would it thump me a code? A drumbeat to signify, I'll love you if I survive and not implode here and now with your lips upon my lips. Our foreheads touch and I suck out the bad drips. One by one, ravens fly out of your ears. They love me, I set them free. I give you my tongue to play with, to distract you from my work. Now the jelly flows out of your ears, now inert, it's lifeless. Her evil hold on you relinquished. You shan't feel badly again today. Your mother always loved you. A hand, it never touched you. Your brother made it safely to shore, swam all the way. I watched him stroke. God holds out his palm and you jump on board. Mm. My work is done for today. Tomorrow I'll be back again. Find you hunched and seething in a doorway. And I'll suck out the devil once more. Suck out the devil once more. God holds out his palm. It's so, uh, oh Lord, it's so beautiful. Like, I, I, I need, let me read to you what people have been saying, you know. It, it's so beautiful. Uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really glad that I got to read this book. Uh, there are not so many beautiful, there are not so many, you know, outstanding works like this, a collection, you know, where two beautiful poets come together and say, hey, let's make magic. Let me, let me just read a couple of things that, um, that people have been saying, especially as you were reading. Uh, let me see, from here. It says, um, okay, let me start from Mohammed Bilu. Mohammed Bilu says, what is war when you can't fight it? I'm guessing it's coming from uh, Adidas' uh, poem. Timothy says, 
Okay, Timothy, Kola, Kola says, what is one way you can find the same one? I'm coming down to where they were talking about Ellie's work. Uh, Richard says, Elizabeth, this is incredible. So, so good. And then Priscilla says, nobody tells me anything. You know, that line, that line, that, the kind of line that, that gets at you. It's so simple, yet it's, it holds a lot of meaning. Kola Wale says, Ellie reads so gracefully. And then Kristen says, tree limb image. It's a tree limb image. Wow. Then Pray says, wow, your voice makes the poem hit me more. You read so well. And this is another wow. Uh, and then Kola, Kola says, I'm going to cry. Oh, gosh. You know. And then Timothy says, why can't we applaud? <laughs> I, I really wish we can applaud. Maybe you just uh, put on your, you, you unmute yourself and then do a clap and then we will be fine. Uh, Adedayo says, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. You know, Mohammed says, wow, thank you, Ellie. And Father Kemi says, your peace turns nakedness into an armor. Aloneness is strongly felt in that peace. That's how much impact this, this works have. Is I stand and stare at your naked back for the wrong reasons. Uh, that line alone gets you thinking in all directions. And that's what a good poem should do. That's what a good line should do. Give you different meanings. He says, one by one, ravens fly out. If your ears, they love me, I set them free. And then Pray says, I need to take reading lessons from you, Ellie. I think, uh, Elizabeth, I think you should, you, should, you should think about giving reading classes. Very, very important. Very, very important. And then Timothy says, this is awesome, Ellie. Pray says, that was a beautiful poem. And Kalawale says, Elizabeth Farrell Horan. He gives you a full name. Such a beautiful reading. I, I think it's, it's amazing. You know, I, I don't think I've even heard you read uh, at all in this way this is this is this is the different thing because uh, you have the poem on the page doing the beautiful work and then you hear it's being read and it's giving you all the right emotions i think it's so beautiful my I'm my, glad I'm my flex guys, is that honestly. my flex my flex is that <laughs> i've 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 heard that read countless times you can imagine <laughs> you can imagine you should reduce so you have bragging, again. you, have bragging, you know right? i just I just I just plug my earpiece and then I'll probably be muffling cries and all because I mean she she gets into my field all the freaking time but like I mean it's so very basic very basic so yes yeah so I, I think the reason the reason the reason it comes out that way is because it comes from a place of genuity it's genuine it, it's it's it, it comes from a, you know a place in the heart where it's really felt i think that's 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 why the impact is really you know great that said let me ask you Dayo, what role does empathy play in coming up with such beautiful compositions the role of empathy in coming up with such beautiful compositions <laughs> is that okay, a tough so, one? <laughs> no, it's it's it isn't. I feel like it's okay. Two people who do not know each other. I'm I'm gonna like tell you a story mm. right now. Yeah. So two people who do not know each other from anywhere met online on Twitter to be precise and you know, they got talking. Of course, it always starts with, oh, I read your poem, it was beautiful. And then they got talking and they started to share works with each other. Beyond sharing works, they started to talk about themselves and what they've had to go through. Yeah. It is, it is, um, it is very normal that at some point, because we are humans, would yeah. get to feel how they felt. Because these stories are genuine. There's a way the body, there, there's this part of the Bible that says that the spirit bears witness with your spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a way you tell me a story and then, I mean, my body just, my, 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 my entire body just, just sticks with that story because there's a, there's a sense of truth in it. Yeah. When Elizabeth told me a bunch of stories, when I shared 
a bunch of stories. Uh, we resonated with mm. each other because it was, it, it was, was that she was coming with her grief. I was coming with mine. So we traded. We traded mm. what we had. So it became a common grief. It, it became a, a, an open field of, of feelings. Okay. We, we had, I had, I had stuff to pull through from. She had stuff to pull through from. I was helping her. Beyond, beyond this book that we did, mm-hmm. we, we, we talk, we, we help ourselves up. The, 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 the smaller sense of this entire process is just this book. We are good friends. It goes beyond that. I mean, this is the book is just a test. Yes, this this book is just is just um a testimonial that oh these people once were once talked about how they felt and then but beyond in the background we did a lot of heavy lifting of ourselves. I mean you can imagine that if there is crashing down and then God is dipping his hands down way into the earth to lift the bed up. That is how deep we might have fallen and how far we might have tried mm. to bring ourselves up and see ourselves today. We, we so, awesome. I mean, it's... Empathy was sort of like the driver of this entire project. Truth mm-hmm. was a pivot. Ourselves, we were yeah. the fulcrum. I mean, we just... It just this thing just fell into place. They just... Fell into place and we had we had we had an amazing book, I guess. So, I mean, I hope you enjoyed my story. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a very good analogy. Very nice one. Uh, Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth, are you there? All right. Awesome. Uh, yes, I'm me, here. What was the greatest challenge? What, what was the greatest challenge you guys faced um, while working on this project? Because, um, like I said, we're in the time where people are. Uh, you know, speaking from just themselves and then people poets just write basically. People know poets as, you know, just write for you, just, just only you. You publish a book, your name, just you. But this is a collaboration. It's something that, that it, it, looks, it looks like a first in a sense because it's not popular here. You know, so it looks like a first. You guys, you guys are comfortable. Yeah, Elizabeth, can you hear me? Okay, I couldn't hear the very last thing you said, but um, basically, said, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I think. Um, the 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 struggles and challenges of of doing a collaboration like this, basically. Um, exactly. Mhm. I think. Um, yeah, you know, you're putting a lot out there. Again, it's um, you can't do this with someone unless you trust them a hundred percent. You can't send your poem over to them um, and have it not them not receive it with complete like compassion and care and love, even if it's not the right thing for the book. Like it takes a really profound trust and, um, you know, relationship of safety, which Addie and I have. Um, we had, we had challenges with the network in Nigeria, to be honest. We had challenges <laughs> with being able to be online at the same time, right, Addy? Like, um, with power going out. I think what, uh, we also, once we wrote the book, we had a very hard time finding a publisher. Um, we had, mm-hmm. um, it was going to be initially at Barron, and that fell through, and that was re- that's really hard, I think, with a collaboration when, um, when something doesn't work out, I know, (laughs) the network in Nigeria. Next one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And, and, you know, and that is such a challenge. And like for, for my Nigerian mentees and all my friends, they're like, that is a massive challenge. You know, you're trying to write a poem, you're trying to study, you're trying to do this and your network goes down or your power goes out. And it's, frustrating stuff you know and I feel that and I I feel that pain and that frustration um I think um yeah so so we finally published this book at Animal Heart Press which is my press which Addie works there um with me and we decided to to essentially self-publish it because I didn't want any more people rejecting it I didn't want you know to me this was like this was Addie's book this was Addie's first print thing 
I wanted it to be special for him. I wanted it, him to be cared for in the publishing process, you know, and I wanted to be like secondary to this being kind of his, his work, you know, his debut, so to speak, yeah. because yeah. I, I've gotten to have mine, you know, so I wanted it, so I wanted it to be a safe place. So that's why we did that. But um, yeah, just, I mean, putting a book out there on your own is hard. I think doing it with another person just takes, you know, massive patience and love and trust. And um, awesome. luckily, luckily we have that because you can't that's, do that with beautiful. anyone. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let, let me, let me come to Diana. Diana, are you there? Okay. So depression, depression, madness, and insanity. Uh, they, they, these are themes which have run throughout the history of poetry. Uh, so I, I want to know what what makes this um, what makes this collection in your own words what makes this collection outstanding from the canon or what what makes it a little different from what has been published in in the years before? Dario, if you heard that, I heard that. I, to to okay. start with, I I sincerely think that depression, madness, insanity. People are writing about it because they are going through it. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because because it's it's a really a very it's a very hard world, and people are having to pull through a lot of things. People are running mad and getting waking up, seeing, and then the next morning, the next the night before they go to bed, they run mad again, and then they fall asleep. Then they wake up seeing. It's just a very very crazy narrative. But beyond that, I I feel like this this book is different because we because of the shared love between us because absolutely it's actually a very ther therapeutic project for you for me for elizabeth you know having to write and then know that somebody's going to write back to you and we did when we were writing this we didn't know that we we're going to like compile it in the book or something we were just trying to help ourselves we were we we're trying to lift ourselves so i mean she she writes i write back that's that's like that's like it i would always remember this writing process this book writing process because it is different it is not the regular book writing process for anyone. I mean, it's it's a collect it's a it's a collection of of shared love, of 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 um of an empathetic mm. relationship. It's it's genuine. It's real. It's truthful. I, and I think not the book is amazing. The book is outstanding. But what is more outstanding is the process, the process of writing it. I mean, it, it, and, and people might not get to like know the process until they, they attend readings or, or yes, readings like this, because I mean, yeah. do we have to like go to Twitter to say, this was how we wrote our book. Oh. I mean, <laughs> so, so <laughs> I, it, it's, it's just, it's just, it's, it's the process for me, actually. It's the process for me. All right. Speaking about the process, how long did it take to come up with the poems in this collection? And I'm asking both of you now. Uh, you are going to ask how long, you are going to answer how long, and both of you are going to answer who are your individual best critic, two of you. Best critic? Uh, so for first answer, you, Dayo, answer first. How long did it come up? How long did it take to come up with the poems? Then next, you're going to answer who, who is your best critic, like, of your work, of your own work. Oh, oh of my work, okay. Um, yes. Uh, well, I, I can't remember how long it took, but it, it took a while. We started writing this book in 2017. We, it, it dated back to 2017. We started writing, we're writing, stop wood, write, wow. stop wood. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't exactly a one-time thing. It's not like somebody has a, a well of poems in their head and they were just fetching, you know? I mean, we would write, we'd stop. And then Elizabeth, Elizabeth actually, she, I, I like our work process a lot because, you know, at some point, we felt like the book was okay with just five poems or six poems or so. And then she said, Oh, we, we really have to like keep writing. And at that point, it's it's it was very obvious that this this woman is so is so into this into this project because I mean I was feeling the fact that we are helping ourselves. I wasn't looking at the larger picture of having a book, but I mean I'm like, okay. Yeah. So we're going to like publish the book, okay? <laughs> so I mean, it, it it took it took a while. It took a while. It took. A, I mean, at least mm -hmm. at least at least that I can remember six months. We, we we were just and then we were editing. We were so it it took about. Yes, 
So my, 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 my favorite critic, eh? or my best critic, that my guys, mm. my guys from the, from of my, your my work, friends, yeah. from my, yes, from my collective, from, from my, my friends, actually, Adimola, Adi, Adi Bayo, Adaki, Jeremiah, Patrick Lume, uh, um, Michael Akuche, and, uh, um, Pamela and Jacob. I mean, these guys are these guys are amazing. Wali Ayla, these guys are amazing. I mean, they just you throw them a walk and then they tear it apart. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, and of course, Elizabeth. I, 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 she's more. She's more of the. She's more of the. This work is great, but I think you should do it this way. Okay, let me read it and hear how it sounds, and then I'll get back to you. And then you just get a voice note, and then you're quite your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Wow. Okay, over to your I... woman. Let's know who's the best critic of your work. Um, I don't know, but I liked that impression of me. That was funny. I think that made me blush. Um, <laughs> um, I was thinking about it when he was answering it. I, <laughs> I know, it's funny. Um, I guess I, I'm going to say, like, my readers. Like, um, I don't always share a lot of my poems before they go out. Um, mm. So... I, I don't edit that much. Like, I guess um, I send, I, I, I guess I would say my readers and if they respond to something, then I feel like, okay, good, more of that. Or So I don't really have an awesome answer for that question. I mean, I, I send things to Addie and Sam a lot and, you know, most of the time they go like, hot oh, damn, Ellie, you know, they're not like, <laughs> they're never like, oh, let's rewrite this yeah, part. So like, they're just like, they're like, just, yeah. Just Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. You, you try to walk with that. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Um, okay, yeah, staying with you, let me ask you this before we go to another reading. Uh, we, have, we still have a, uh, a few more minutes to go before we, we wrap up. Uh, what is the future of um, poetry therapy or poetry as self-help? Um, it's a great question. I mean, I think... Um, I think certainly writing poetry as therapy is great. You know, it can be like journaling if people aren't, you know, super in, you know, established poets, you can journal and that's, that's just as good. I think, um, you know, having therapists have poetry books like on hand for patients to read, I think makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, um, I know I donated my was it rape book to like women's shelters here, um, things like that. And like, I think if, you know, people who are struggling with bipolar mental health and eating disorders read this book, I think that would be, you know, a form of therapy um, for them. And just like sharing that, sharing your poetry with the world and, you know, other people, I think is like, I think this session here that we're doing is therapy for all of us, you know, it's- yeah. It's true, bonding together true. when we feel alone and it's sharing vulnerabilities and sharing love and care and warmth and that that's what therapy should should look like so you know more zoom more that, zoom readings <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's right that was, that was said very right that was said very right yeah. Dayo, are you are you with me Dayo, can you hear me yes all right i'm coming over to you Dayo. can you hear me all right, awesome. Uh, tell yes, me, what in. points do you continually go back to? Yeah, what points do you continually go back to? Elizabeth, you're going to answer that also, but we're starting with Dio. What points do you constantly go back to? George Abraham. Okay. George Abraham, Safia Elio, Patrick Lume, Walia Ila. Okay. See, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those... Um, uh, uh, buy, buy Nigeria to save the Naira, or buy the Naira to save Nigeria. <laughs> Quote and unquote, for poetry. I, I read my friends, friends extensively, mm. uh, extensively, and then I, I have particular poets that I, mm. that I really, really, really go to for when, 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 when I am 
in a ditch, you know. I just I just know that I'm I might I might be reading Lee Young, Safia Leo, George Abraham. I'm very particular about those. And then Walia in La at back in Jeremiah, Nome Patrick, Adibayo Samuel. Um uh, and there's this part, there's this my friend, Pamela and Jacob, who writes extensively about my mental health. You know, I I I just I just read it and I'm like okay, people are going through shit. And then people are writing beautifully about their shit. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the thing for me. I read, I, read, I read my friends a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I read my friends a lot because, of course, they, 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 form, they form the generation of... They, they're already in the future, actually, but they, they, form, they form a generation of Nigerian, Nigerian poetry. That, that people would look up to, that people would read in years to come. So, I mean, it is, it is, a, it is a very big honor for me to start reading them now. I read their poems before it goes out. I, I read them when, when it goes out. I, they read mine. So it's, it's more like a shared thing. So I read them a lot. That's good. That's good. Uh, so before I leave you, before I leave you, let me ask you this. Uh, because when I come back to you, you're going to be reading us two poems. Uh, how has your idea of poetry changed since you published this book? That's that's a tough question. I'm, I'm not usually I'm not exactly smart enough to have ideas around, <laughs> but, but I, I I know that about this project I did not exactly care about how much people people I I wanted people to read it, but what I cared about particularly was the fact that I did a thing with Elizabeth and it was beautiful. Oh, sorry, it is beautiful. I mean that 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 is like what centers that, that is like the central idea of 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 writing this book of creating. I want people I wanted people to and and the, she's so generous. She said every copy that we sell, so people should buy so that it's she's like she has decided that mm. every copy that we sell, the the um, royalty comes. Royalties. <laughs> That's big. Yes. Just That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I mean, people bought and then she sent me royalties, and I'm like, oh God! <laughs> right, it's sweet when you get when you get paid for it, but 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 I I know that I just really wanted I, people I to I know I just really wanted people to know that we wrote, but more importantly, I wrote with Elizabeth. So I I would I would really look forward to writing with somebody else in at a later time when when i have when i'm done with the projects i have and i'll look forward to it. someone that i can you know I, it's, it's a thing i know how this process works now i know how it works i know that there's a place of shared grief common grief there's a there's a place of understanding yourself there's a place of friendship and then from there we can we can write great books because of course it has we've we've done it before and it has worked so yes all right, that's beautiful. Uh, Elizabeth, are you there? Yes. Hi. Okay, so tell us, uh, what, what ways do you continually go back to and um, how has your idea of poetry changed uh, after publishing this book? Um, yeah, so for me, um, and you can probably tell if you've read much of my work, I go back a lot to Sylvia Plath. She is mm. um, someone that I, feel very close to and understand, I feel. Um, she was not afraid to, especially in her final poems, really write about the monster inside. And I think um, sometimes with mental illness, that's how I feel. I'm not bipolar, but there is a monster in me. And a lot of my poems will say like, you know, she's an impatient here too. You have to love her too. You have to take the you know, the fluffy Ellie who, you know, is sweet and kind with the monster that rages within her. You know, I can't separate those two people. Um, and Plath, Plath helps me um, get in touch with that and, and share that with the world. I think it's important. Um, I, I have read a lot of Dickinson. I learned how to do slant rhyme from her. I love to rhyme in my poems and do so in interesting ways. Um, I also, you know, I read the Nigerian poets too. Like we published this book, Memento, 
this gorgeous, gorgeous mm. anthology of Nigerian contemporary poetry Mental. that Adedayo um, and I had this idea way back like two years ago, right, Addy? I don't even know when. I said, we're going to publish a, a premier anthology. And by God, we did it. And Addy edited it and, and Spearhead, you know, managed it and ran that thing. And I know, okay. I, know I know people who are here now are, are in it and helped with it. And it just, what, the, the poetry that comes out of Nigeria, like someone mentioned, like Adedayo's use of imagery, like mm -hmm. it's extraordinary the language that I read from the Nigerian poet, because I can't replicate that. Like I can't be like, okay, I'm gonna write a poem like Addy. Like it just isn't, I don't have those images of birds, of, of fields, of, the blood and the pain like i you know yeah memento is incredible um so i i feel really excited about the language that that i see and it inspires me to push myself harder and and plus these poem these poets are so damn young you know like <laughs> if i had been if i had started when i was 23 like i mean it's just incredible to me like the maturity of um these poets I'm working with, like Addy and Sam and, and Timothy and everybody. Mm. Such maturity of voice that you don't see necessarily in like American young poets, right? Like it, there's just a depth and it, it's extraordinary. So I feel honored to get to work with, with, yeah, with them. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm blushing on their behalf because it's beautiful. I, it's like, uh, I, I was saying something about them. The, 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 the Nigerian and African poets, uh, they, 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 they're kind of making a song to which the world wants to dance, but does not even understand the full step, you know. It's so beautiful and uh, everybody wants to be involved. That's so beautiful. That's very beautiful. I don't know if, um, if Fadekemi is here. Fadekemi, if you're here, we want to know if you're ready for it. Fadekemi wants to read the poem, so she should get ready. Uh, but first, we're going to go back to our guest poets, and they're going to give us two more beautiful poems uh, before Father Kemi will do one and then we'll see how we can wrap up. We still have a few more minutes and then we can call it a day. Dayo, are you ready? Dayo, are you there? Uh, yes, yes, I am. All right. Uh, guess, sorry, can I, am I, am I allowed to like read outside of the collection? I, I, Honestly, we would have loved mm -hmm. to read inside the collection, but it's fine if you have, you would only read one outside the collection and one. Inside yes, the collection. of course, of course, of course. I just, I just needed to read <laughs> this particular poem to the entire world. Okay. And, All right, that's good. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm trying to like find the poem. It's all right. Yeah, it's actually very short. So, um, a grandchild's lamentation. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Grandchild's, grandchild's lamentation. lamentation. Mm -hmm. I am tired of surviving. Four years after, and your face still lit up in my dream. If I am God's out and a museum of bones, what value would you name me, Grandma? You were good to me until the mortician shot the coffin until the boys lowered it into the grave, until my father's eyes turned red before his entire children. I have shut this door again, first with a poem and a prayer, then a course and a song. I have asked you to, I have asked you to unlove me. If my body was a temple and an altar, what would you beg for? I have held shadows, with my hands and poured salt over my feet. I have ministered the Holy Ghost into this one body. Mm. You were good to me before the canker worms burrowed your skull, before moths ate your home of wood. Your ghost swam into the dream of your favorite grandchild. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so oh, that, that, poem, that poem is, um, that poem is, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually still, I still have doses of 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 dreams where my grandmother felt are true, and you know, I just said, okay, I'm going to like start writing or co collecting these dreams because mm -hmm. um, I I think that my most prized my my most prized possession is um 
the dreams that I have and the, the memories that I have of people who come into my life, people who come and go, people who have gone, people who have left. So I'm going to like be reading another poem. I titled it um, "Interrogating Me." Sorry, interrogating me interrogating for me. asylum. Interrogating All me. All right. Yes. Uh, where's this poem, God? <laughs> Interrogating me for asylum. Yes. Interrogating me seeking asylum. Okay. You look like a journey. Like the hands of a city stretched into a dream. You look dead. Or do you carry a graveyard of names, people in your body? I don't know. What is your name? I don't know. Why are you here? Where are you from? I don't know. Do you have parents? I don't know. What do you know? That the sun here is not different. That language is water, fire. That at the beach, boys rush against the waves, unafraid of drowning, unashamed, unashamed of gifting their bodies to gravity, wishing Jesus had kept to time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, I, I was going to say, uh, in the last maybe two, three poems, you have, you have used so many beautiful blasphemies that uh, my head are just going, my head is just spinning, you know. <laughs> 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 so beautiful, you know. So beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Uh, let me, let me. Because I'm going to has been uh, taking notes and he, he says here um he said one of them says, i have been to the swine body it, the, the, the contrast of that the holy ghost and the swine body the contrast of that is you know it gives you that's where the punch is you know mm -hmm. and then uh seek that's what he said <laughs> see all right beautiful thank you guys uh let's go over to elizabeth now i'm hoping father kim is getting ready she wants to be I'm hoping she'll be she's she'll ready. Be ready to just give us one piece. I'm, I'm okay, ready. that's good. Let's let's wait for let's wait for winter. Let's wait for Elizabeth, then we'll come back to Fadi Kemi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should I how many should I read this time, Nathaniel? Two two points. I, I do. Yeah. Two points. Two. Um, I just want to say before I start, in case I don't get a chance to at the end, Addy, I love you so much, sugar. I, I love you. I will always love you. I'm so proud of I you. I love you too. I'm so proud I of you. you I mean, you look at you. You are uh, the real thing, sugar. And you have just, uh, you just, I've always told him, I'm like, someday you're going to surpass me. Uh, and you're going to go, nice. you're going to go flying, off flying, and I'll watch Very you. Good. I'll say, good I job, baby. I just my camera so that. <laughs> good. <laughs> Plus, I just wanted to see if I could make you cry. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, oh God. Right. I love you, sugar. I love you. I'm so proud of you. Okay. Love here comes Mama Shita. Home. Yeah. That's right. We've been through a lot together. This one's called um, The Little Girl Who Stood By Watching. I miss that boy too. I bet he fought really hard and I love him. I wish I knew him. Maybe I do. I remember the empty pit in my stomach like dragon bile. On that day, I felt you struggling. I knew you were going under the knife. You know, that little girl who stood by watching, she died too. The day her daddy said goodbye and went to a new house and a new lady person, and for some reason without me, and I knew in that moment he wouldn't marry me. Instead would probably marry her, I guess, at age eight. Then he did. I stopped trying on rings, ashamed of my vanity. Other hardship superfluous to the death I died that sunny August day as I squinted in the sun and nodded my head dumbly. Yes, daddy, I understand. When really I never, never would, why would I? Funny, a straitjacket can be imposed upon a little boy while a girl who could have flown to the moon chose not to. 
but rather checked herself in for not being good enough, not thin enough. She did unthinkably stupid things. She fell off porches on purpose, like a fainting goat, crashed her car into an oak, took a few extra Tylenol. No one was paying enough attention. I was invisible except to the predator who eats alive the little girls, who hate being little and virginal, who hate being little and adorable, who long to be lanky, blonde, rich, cool, smoking, wearing tight jeans, making out with Stevie by their locker, just lips, not yet tongue. One day I bought Ipecac from a hungover pharmacist and almost died retching blood by the interstate in a ditch. Didn't work. Daddy didn't come home. Stevie never dated me. I am still the little girl vomiting her insides out, trying to purge the hurt, the betrayal, the assault of a best friend's brother on my lower body. The dragon bile of loss and self-hatred that comes when she thinks all this was her fault, that comes when little virgins are convinced by best friends and helpful policemen that they asked for it. Mm. But you know these words, these frantic words, the editors like, the first things that have ever, ever been good enough that daddy finally took notice and said, good girl, strong launch. Maybe if I am careful to never stop writing, he will finally come home. The only person still waiting there in her little yellow bedroom with the yellow paisley wallpaper is me. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 I, I, I really pray that we are recording this because I really want to listen to these things again. I really hope that we have this recorded somewhere. I really want to go back to these places and listen to them again. It's so beautiful what you guys do. So, so beautiful. <laughs> Elizabeth, you have one more poem and then. Yeah. This one, this one's going to. This one's gonna cheer us all up a little bit after all these painful damn poems. <laughs> and uh, this one is for Addie. And this one, I, I read right. to you with all my heart, baby. And um, I, uh, I forget what I was gonna say. I'll just go. <laughs> this is called Wedding Day, which was the original title of this book before, I think before I wrote this poem and then we changed it. You'll see why. <laughs> it's all right. Wed yeah, <laughs> wedding day. Very sad wedding, actually. <laughs> this boy, this boy, I felt his heavy cupboards, this angel in dark clothes, knees scarified to whip burn to a god he don't know. And this lady, just a lady with a heart and a bouquet of skin rose, a woman with the burden of three, she carries a lifetime of drinking. They told me the day I die would be rainy, so I said, no goddamn obituary. And yours is gray, skin gray, charcoal lidded stare, outer world which tells little boys to work hard for no returns, no returns. Unnaturally rimmed in diamonds, slits closed. You tugged a power cord, small boy, alone in the waves of a mama's grief, a construct going under, going under. And the zap I felt set me straight up in bed. Someone was close to dying. I thought it was me, hell bent on therapy. What a dreary way to meet, standing in puddles of electricity, my brains, your feet. God's pretty funny when he's fucking with our lives. Mm. And you'll wear white, I'll put on my best black, for our wedding day will be the next and the next. No more of this drowning. No more broken paddle, no more white-fisted water. Hear me scream across the ocean. Hear me screaming. Ain't no, ain't no church, no pastor, no God. And Adadio, my eyes will be green as the wilds. Not a drop of blood running down my cheek. Mm. As you in my arms, as we, as spouses, so righteous we go flying. Wow. Wow! <laughs> you, you, this, wow! It's it's really really powerful. Uh, before Father Kevin gives us um, her beautiful poem, let, let I I. I
Everybody likes the ring. I mean, everybody's doing, oh my God, I can see, oh my God, I can see, oh Lord, I can see I'm in tears. I can see like tears, tears. I can see color says the silence, the moving of hearts. He says it swings me in the air. Uh, we have Lima saying, I'm crying. Color Wale says, they told me the day I'll die would be raining. How do you even come up with such, such a line? My prayer says deep. Color Wale goes again and he says, God's pretty funny when he's fucking with our lives. That's, mm. that's crazy. Like really, really crazy. You know, and then you have the line, so righteous, we go flying. It's a, it's a stunner. It's a, it's a, it's a real stunner. I really, I really hope that those who have not read this book, uh, please go, go to Amazon, go and check it out. You know, you need to buy it. You need to read and see what people, how, how these poets have put their hearts on the page. I think when, it, that's when you begin to really, really appreciate what we have done here today. All right, uh, that's it. Let's get to Swati Kelly. There you go. You have the floor now. Thank you. Sunas, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Great. Hello, everyone. And it's an honor to join you today. I'm a very fledgling poet, even though I'm almost 50. And I'm so in <laughs> awe of young poets today. And the, poet, the poem I'm about to read is actually in honor of uh, one of my children, who's an adult in her own right. Um, Mental health in, in my day, when I was younger, happened just as much as it happens now, mental health issues. But we didn't talk about it. We were quiet about it. You weren't even allowed to express it in your, in your prose, in your poetry. You bottled it inside. And so one thing my daughter taught me was it is your right to speak your truth and to speak your pain. Preach. And she taught Preach. me that. And so I wrote this poem to honor her. Um, awesome. There was a particular event that she went through that really affected her. And my first inclination was, you know, hush, hush, we'll deal with it. Let's, you know, try and be private about it. But she was no, she was fiercely no. And she, she put it all on the table and she expressed it in her art, in her paintings and everything. And at the end of it, she came out victorious. So the title of this poem so, is called um, Yemoja and the Battle of Everythingness. Um, I'm sure many of us will know that in the Yoruba okay. tradition, tradition, Yemoja is the mother of all female deities. Okay, so it's just metaphorical uh, that I'm trying to refer to her as a goddess. Forgive yeah. me if it's a little bit long. I'll try and go through it as quickly as, as possible. But it basically tells Take the story. Uh, it basically tells the story of how Yemoja, the person, assumed mm -hmm. her position as Yemo, Yemoja, the goddess, which is how I see right. my daughter today because of what she went through and how she handled it. So here we go. The night was full right. of nothing. Peril and stillness traverse the sky, hand in hand as sisters. Perhaps the stars feared what always followed, a premeditated ambush, fueled with galaxies of rage against a stubborn claim to peace. The creature's skin was a portrait of hate, blotches from a raw shark test. Sinewy flesh diseased with thorns and avarice, had Yemoja been awake, she would have watched in vain. For of all her glorious potencies, none matched this. At first strike, her lifeblood sprung forth. She remembered her first divining of the Ogun waters, how they gushed forth eagerly from the earth, as from the jagged opening now in her heart. Did you really think you could escape me? Its snare was thick with consummation as it peered into the windows of her shame, its cold claws around her neck. For a fleeting moment, she struggled, desperate to regain her dying light. Then her groans became as faraway whispers. She had heard these yearnings before, but heart could not sustain what mind desired. Every slowing beat, faring away, Images of life in past tense, 
until she was as still as the night and her body welcomed the color of shadows. From the depths of a pit came the laughter of the beast, its appetite satiated by her total surrender. Worthless little fool, you are ended without remedy. Another soul I take. The time had come to feed on its prize, to drink the offering she had fought so long not to give. But as the creature bent its head to her chest, the most unexpected followed. Like vapor from a hot spring, she morphed between the realms of flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit, flesh and spirit. Moments later, spirit lay full claim, and the beast found it could no longer grasp her. All that was death in her flitted away, and she began to shimmer with increasing iridescence. It clenched its talons, yet she ascended. It was as our forefathers had decreed it. There is no strength that will stop the sun from rising, they always said. The beast cowered as her light became blinding, beaming, swashing, as though crying out, rejoice. Love was illuminated in a timeless dance. Yemoja had become the night and the earth, and the trees, and the waters, abundant with all in infinite power. The creature lost all glory in form as the light pervaded every cell of its darkness, becoming one with her light. For every man, a time is apportioned. And had Yemoja known this battle's outcome, she might have sung different songs. She might have lived her life's measure a little more freely. Not a warring fugitive, running from the beast of her destiny, her very road to everythingness. Thank you for listening. Wow. <laughs> that was beautiful. I, 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 well, I mean, it's not just me. Uh, a lot of persons have been pulled. That was very, I think one of the things that did for me is to highlight what Ellie said earlier on. Uh, mm -hmm. like the poems in in the collection uh, to say hey, 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 I went through this and I'm still breathing, you know what I mean? Paul says to me, he says here, uh, the night was full of nothingness, perils and evil traversed the sky. The creature's skin was a portrait of pain, so beautiful. That's what Steve says. Timothy just says, oh wow. Thank you. And Paula goes on to say, until she was as still as the night and her body welcomed the color of shadows, the color of shadows. So beautiful. Thank you <laughs> and, so and, much. Uh, uh, praise, says, praise says, there is no strength that will stop the sun from rising. And he says, oh, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> All right. Kola, Kola, goes, Kola says to you, he says, I wish I could have this poem. And Timothy is there. He says, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think it was a beautiful <laughs> poem. I think it Thank was you so a very much. beautiful poem. Thank you very Thank much you. for sharing. Thank you very My much pleasure. for sharing. My yes. pleasure. Thanks right. for having me. Back to, uh, back to, all right. Thank you very much, Mother Kemi. Thank you very much. We're trying to rush. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to our uh, guest poet. Uh, you're going to give us a final word. But before your final word, guys, I want us to, uh, I want Julia to talk to us about Mbaruno. Julia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Julia, can Thank you hear you. me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Thank, so you Julia, everybody. Here with us. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Yes, go ahead. Eli Adedayo, um, thank you so much. It was a really, really eye-opening session, and um, I'm sure it, we have all been impacted. Fadikemi, also thank you for your poem. So I'll just briefly talk about Mbarino, the organizer of this event, and so that you can also be able to appreciate what we're doing. Okay, so Mbaruno is um, a platform using design to build human capital and make social impact. So um, we're setting up spaces where designers and professionals can share insights, knowledge, resources, showcase their work like we're doing today, network and explore opportunities to collaborate, you know, for growth. So um, for our enterprise events, which is one of the events we're having today, our Mbaruno Book Club, so we're having so righteous we we fly so we go flying we go flying so we're happy to have you here so this is one of our 
uh, knowledge sharing events. So we also have capacity building projects and then um, knowledge showcase under, for, under our enterprise programs. Then we also have our spaces in Barino, setting up spaces where um, designers and professionals can collaborate. So we have remote co-working spaces. We have exhibition spaces where you can have your pop-up events, your art exhibitions. We have a friendly neighborhood bistro in here. Also, we have a multimedia studio um, for your photography, video, and sound production services. Then we have a design consultancy also providing um, multidisciplinary services for design. Then we have a directory also. <laughs> we are curating the largest data, database of designers and professionals, hubs, events, and um, publications. So you can, awesome. you know, um, as a professional, you can, go, you can put up your profile, your events, your, your hubs on our database. Then finally, we have the Mbaruno Forum, which is the NGO and the Open Innovation Lab for Mbaruno. So on Open Innovation Lab, we are engaging the collective of designers and activities that are rooted in indigenous realities, where we develop cultures, products, events, and services that solve social problems in Africa. So we do all this here, and um, um, book club, which we're having today, is just one of our enterprise programs. So we're enjoying you to um, follow us on social media at Mbari Uno, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, there, so you can you know get, have information about all our activities and we're really excited about this event today and i hope you go home um very impacted thank you so much Sunes, for hosting this event um i'm quite excited and i can't wait for the next one <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure my pleasure Gina. thank you my so pleasure. much ellie all right your thank point you got so me much. almost tearing thank <laughs> Did you so I much <laughs> Thank you also, Adidayo. Um, you have so many years ahead of you, so I'm sure you're going to be big. And then, Father Kemi, for sharing from your pain. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Right. So, we'd like to have uh, thank your you. feedback. Thank you. All right, Dayo. We'd like to have your feedback on the, on the, on the book club. Mm. You can share your feedback with us. Thank you so much for joining. So, over to you, Sunest. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Dayo, are you there? Let's yes, have I your am. final word. Mm -hmm. Final what, word. What final word? What, what final word do I do I have when when I have <laughs> Eli, I have Fadikemi, I have I mean I literally have my heroes in <laughs> in a single room. <laughs> it's, it's just love and light to love and light to everybody. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Love and light to everybody. That's a beautiful one. Love and light to everybody. Okay. Elizabeth, to me? Can you hear me? Yeah, final turn? word for us. Yeah, here. Final word. Well, I guess I just, right now, I just feel so damn lucky. Like, I get to come on a show like this and be with you guys and have friends here that care about me that I care about so much I think you know poetry as a healing bomb like this is it this is it live and and in as close to in person as we can do and I'm just struck by the beauty of that and and how much you know the time Nathaniel took to to put this together and Bari Uno for hosting us like people taking the time to read these poems and care about this this thing we've done makes it all worthwhile. And um, Addy is just a fantastic poet and he's gonna go big places. I know he is. Um, yeah. I'm so proud of him and I, I'm just, I'm so grateful to be, you know, on the outside looking into the, the Nigerian poetry world. I feel so honored that I get to work with so many brilliant poem, poets in that world and that, um, they share their work with me. So I just feel incredibly blessed right now and thankful to everyone coming. And Thank you here. very much. <laughs>